Well, good evening and welcome to what I think is our fourth virtual meeting live tonight for the good people of Sky and Lochalsh. And we'll wait just uh, another minute um, so that we start bang on seven o'clock. Uh, there's a, a lot of questions and it's good to see uh, folks uh, starting to, to join in tonight. Well, good evening. It's uh, seven o'clock on the dot and I think we should get started. Uh, so firstly, uh, for those that don't know, uh, my name is Kate Forbes and I am the SNP candidate for the upcoming election for this constituency seat of Sky, Loch Aver and uh, Bainoch. We had our first of these live meetings last week and uh, every night we've learned something new in terms of uh, how to make them slightly more effective. And this being the fourth, hopefully, will run like uh, clockwork. Uh, it's a bit strange these days. Normally, we would be in the process, I think, of uh, setting out the chairs in a village hall uh, somewhere and uh, you, we would be able to uh, talk in person. Um, I think it's still very important that we ensure democracy continues during this election and that there's a way for the, the people of Sky and Lachalsh to keep me accountable, to ask uh, good uh, legitimate questions and just to make sure uh, that we can have um, these exchanges. We've asked for questions in advance so thank you very much for submitting those questions and um, I will get through as many as I can. There are, are a lot of questions that have been uh, submitted Somebody else, not me, it has grouped them quite helpfully into themes. So around uh, the economy, around infrastructure, around health and uh, so on. And I will then go through and answer them uh, tonight. And um, thank you to those who have submitted them. Um, and you'll probably tell that uh, I've not had any opportunity to look at them in advance. Uh, hopefully the answers are not too waffly, but hopefully uh, that proves um, that we're trying to a replicate a village hall as much as possible. If you didn't get the chance to ask a question um, or if you want to make a, a comment, you can post uh, questions or comments in the discussion section of the Facebook event and somebody from my campaign team is keeping a close eye on that and will ping them over to me uh, during this event uh, for me to respond to. The reason that we've chosen uh, to use YouTube is that not everybody is on Facebook. And uh, I think it, it might be it might be a generational thing, but not everybody is on Facebook. And by that, I mean, it's the young folks that are not on Facebook. Uh, we will try and keep it to 45 minutes. We found um, over the last uh, few uh, public meetings that uh, any longer it uh, gets a little bit strange in this cur current format. And um, so we'll try and keep it to, to 45 uh, minutes uh, max. OK, well, that is uh, two minutes past seven. And let's uh, make a formal start now that the housekeeping is out of the way. Well, I don't know about you, but I think there's probably a lot of people in the Highlands that feel that politics is the last thing on their minds. And yet a lot hangs on this election. We have all been through a, a very difficult and in many cases heartbreaking year. That's particularly true of uh, Sky and Lachalsh. And throughout that time, leadership has never mattered so much. Leadership that uh, is experienced, that's competent, that's uh, honest, that accepts mistakes, uh, leadership that uh, we can trust. And although there is much to be hopeful about just now as vaccinations are rolled out, the vaccination programme remains on track, over half of Scotland's population uh, now vaccinated. And as we start to, to leave lockdown, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And with that light comes choices. And as we steer the country, the economy, over the next few months and years, again, leadership is going to matter. And it's experienced, trustworthy and competent leadership that our country needs. The recovery of the Sky and Lachalsh economy is one of my top priorities. 
I know that the pandemic has left countless businesses on their knees. I know that because many of them are in touch with me day in, day out. I know that unemployment in Sky Lochash has risen. We we see that from uh, the, the claimant count. Uh, we see that from, sadly, the higher uh, percentage of people that are, are, are using uh, food banks and looking for support. And we also know that there are some long-standing issues that have been exacerbated, like young people being priced out of housing. And my commitment to Sky and Lochalsh and to the wider constituency is to tackle each of these challenges, not by dismissing them as though they are easy to fix, because they are not easy to fix. So I will not dismiss them as being easy to fix, but I will tackle them in the same way as I have tackled various challenges over the last five years, which is to listen, to be visible and to be present, to understand what the problem is, and then to work with community groups, to work with you through the ups and the downs until the problem is fixed. And some of these problems feel at times like insurmountable. And yet the last few years have proven that nothing is insurmountable. It just takes endurance, patience and gritty determination. We have, over the last few years, made progress. But there are some things that, although we've made progress on, we still need to nail. I know that healthcare remains uh, a concern. I know that there are continued questions about the future of healthcare in Sky. And yet there are commitments that have been made, and I certainly will be holding all those to account who have made those commitments to see those commitments delivered. We've made progress on infrastructure, but it's not all fixed. I know that there are uh, ongoing challenges, even though there have been huge improvements in some of the key uh, congestion points. And I know that housing um, remains a huge issue. Although new houses have been built, uh, it remains a, a concern. And of course, without a workforce, there are no industries. Without housing, there are no workforce. There is no workforce. And so all of this is tied uh, together. And so my commitment, as I said, is to tackle each of these challenges, difficult though they may be, um, impossible though they sometimes may seem, uh, in the same way as I've tackled challenges over the last uh, few years. And certainly, um, I'm sure we will get into some of the, the specifics of that in the questions. The SNP published uh, its manifesto, uh, I think it was last week now, um, all the weeks are blending into one. Uh, and quite specifically for the Highlands, there were um, commitments that will be of interest. One is around our commitment to the economy and a rural entrepreneur fund to try and support people to move into rural areas or um, those who are already in rural areas uh, start and grow and scale up businesses. Uh, to tackle depopulation, there's a commitment to a, an islands bond to support uh, young families in particular in areas where there is a particular pressure of depopulation. We were also committed to continue the investment, the doubled investment in the Rural Tourism Infrastructure Fund, which is the fund that has, of course, uh, delivered um, substantial uh, schemes in uh, at the ferry, ferry uh, pools, um, at the store and um, elsewhere in Sky. So that is what, as, as a party, we have committed to that is of interest in the Highlands and Islands. But at the heart of this election, because it is one of the most important elections in Scotland's history, is at its heart is a very simple question. And that question is who should decide our country's future? Because now more than ever, as I said, is a time for, lead, for experienced leadership and for government um, as we continue with keeping people safe and also tackling economic uh, recovery. But at its heart in this election is the question about who gets to decide Scotland's future. And this election can be the one in which Scotland overwhelmingly and decisively shows that it wants to choose a better path for our futures, that it wants to tackle uh, inequalities, that it wants to reshape and reform our economy, that it wants to ensure that it's the people of Scotland that have the right to decide our future uh, and not leaving those decisions in the hands of a very distant Westminster government. And, you know, when the COVID crisis is over, that means the right to decide our future in an independence uh, referendum so that we have a recovery that's made in Scotland and the powers needed to build a fairer and more prosperous 
country. So this election is about the local issues that matter to us, and I'm sure the questions will touch on this, on that. This election is about it, the bigger national issues around inequalities and economic recovery. And ultimately, this election is about who gets to have the final say on all of those questions. Will it be the, the people who live here or will we leave those powers uh, elsewhere? So that brings me um, to the questions that have been uh, submitted uh, in advance, which I'm just looking at now for, for the first time. And uh, they have been grouped into uh, tourism economy, into roads and infrastructure, into young people and housing, um, and, and then fishing um, and healthcare as well. And some of them uh, have, um, I can see, um, have been uh, grouped within those groups as well. So um, let's start with tourism and uh, the economy. Um, first question is um, what support there will continue to be for tourism businesses that have been uh, left uh, battered over the last uh, few months? Um, what support will there be uh, this summer if uh, the summer is not as busy as anticipated or um, uh, international travel is not um, uh, permitted? because a lot of tourism businesses still rely on international travel. Well, it's it's a very, um, a very, very pertinent question, I know. Not just in Sky and Lachalsh, but across the constituency, which relies substantially and significantly on tourism. And I know that tourism businesses, and indeed uh, the wider tourism sector, because of course it's not just a accommodation providers, um, or those that are obviously tourism that rely on uh, tourism. I think, I think I'd say um, three things. The first is that I know that one of the biggest frustrations in all of this is when there's a lack of clarity. So being able to plan ahead uh, matters a lot because being open and trading matters a lot. And I also know that ultimately businesses, although um, we will come on to talk about grants and financial support, businesses want to be able to trade. Sky's reputation is enormous. Uh, we know that it is one of the prime um, uh, locations for uh, tourists and that this year there will be a booming staycation market because of the limits on international travel. So it's likely that there will be a lot of visitors and therefore, clearly, businesses want to take advantage of uh, those uh, visitors and open their doors sooner rather than later. So certainty matters. So my first answer would be trying to provide as much early certainty as possible. Now, the First Minister did set out uh, last week that we would be accelerating the relaxation of uh, cross uh, Scotland travel. And uh, from the 26th, um, again, there's the ability to travel across Scotland for, uh, for 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 um, for tourism as well, and um, we want to also uh, ensure that there can be cross UK travel um, at that point too, um, and hopefully that will enable um, accommodation providers and others who rely on uh, business from elsewhere in Scotland and business from elsewhere in the UK uh, to make decisions about that. When it comes to accommodation providers in particular. Uh, I know that there are particular issues for larger accommodation providers like self-catering who need more the rules around uh, in-house socialising to be relaxed as well. And um, that is one thing that is in our sight to relax as quickly as we can, because it's one of the hardest parts about lockdown that, that, that we're unable to socialise in housing. So the first answer to that is around providing uh, certainty so that uh, businesses can take advantage of a, a busy summer season. The second thing is financial support. And uh, this month, if it hasn't already been paid, it will be paid in the next few uh, days. Uh, our restart grant is being paid. Now that restart grant is being paid to uh, businesses uh, like B&Bs and self-caterers who pay council tax, as well as those that are on non-domestic rates. So if you have been uh, receiving this the Strategic Framework Business Fund, then you will also get the restart grant. And that restart grant is the equivalent to two weeks um, of uh, the, the Strategic Framework Business Fund, recognising the fact that businesses are probably opening on average two weeks later than the rest uh, than, than England. Um, and then on top of that is the restart grant of, of £8,000, meaning 
that businesses will be getting up to £19,500. Now, that financial support is the equivalent to up to six months of the Strategic Framework Business Fund, but it is designed to be paid up front to help with restocking and uh, re reopening costs. And the last thing is that from a financial perspective, our hands are extremely tied. So when it comes to, to funding, we get the, the Scottish equivalent of what the UK government spends in England. So where the UK government um, spends a uh, in England, then we get an equivalent fund. Now, of course, where the UK government doesn't spend, that means we don't get the equivalent fund. So there's a lot of businesses, a lot of sectors um, that did not receive money in England, which means there's no equivalent money for here. But recognising that that is hugely unfair to some businesses that needed funding and didn't get it uh, elsewhere, we have tried to use our funding as intelligently as possible to try and support sectors and businesses that are not in properties and premises um, that don't pay rates and to provide support for them, which is why we had all the different sectoral schemes. Um, now, I am not averse to revisiting any of these sectoral schemes. However, I can only do what um, the, the, the funding allows for. And there's a lot of talk um, about uh, sitting on money or not spending money. Well, just for absolute clarity, last year we spent £3.2 billion on the NHS response in full, completely, in total vaccinations, procurement for PPE and um, NHS. That's £3.2 billion. We spent £3.1 billion on grants and non-domestic rates relief. So before we even talk about furlough, at £3.1 billion. So actually what we've spent on business support is very, very similar to what we've spent on uh, the, the health response, which shows just the extent of the, the economic crisis as well, because that will, that's over and above uh, the furlough scheme and the self-employed income support scheme. So substantial funding has been has been spent, but I know that none of the grants um, cover uh, lost income and uh, do not cover fixed costs. And there's a lot of businesses that have received more um, than other businesses who have received less. So that is a, a longer answer than I intended about ongoing support um, for tourism businesses. I suppose there's a fourth answer as well, if I could briefly um, touch on that, which is that last autumn, we, uh, well, it was late summer, we set up the Tourism uh, Recovery Task Force. And that Tourism Recovery Task Force, uh, made up of stakeholders from the industry, uh, brought together a series of recommendations for supporting the tourism um, economy af after um, the pandemic. And we have already implemented a number of those recommendations, uh, including um, including the, the 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 increase in the rural tourism infrastructure fund to try and contend with um, the, uh, the 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 pressures um, from from wild campers and others. Okay, do I support a tourist camper van tax? Why why not? I think that is the wrong question at the wrong time. No disrespect intended to the person who asked it. I think that is the last thing on our minds right now and everything should be geared towards um, tourism recovery and uh, not to any disincentives uh, uh, to, to the, that might uh, hinder the recovery of tourism. So um, I would say that is the wrong question at the wrong time. Um, okay, what is the backup plan for tourism management this summer? Um, and then questions about uh, rangers and uh, what um, the, the support in place uh, will be and will um, what are we doing about litter um, and uh, traffic congestion and will um, rangers be employed all year round? Um, in answer to that question, uh, there has been a lot of work over the winter period to try and prepare for um, what happened last summer which was a significant increase in uh, wild campers, uh, dirty campers in some cases, and some antisocial behaviour from people that were travelling to the Highlands um, and not showing much respect, if any, to the local community and to the um, natural environment. And it wasn't necessarily benefiting local businesses either because they were uh, largely staying in tents. Over the winter... Just a series, some of the, the work that's been going on. First of all, uh, there was a, a task force of 
Visit Scotland, the Scottish Government, uh, SNH, uh, Nature Scott is what it's called now, um, and uh, National Parks uh, and others that all have an involvement in this to have a visitor management plan. That included investing funding in key hotspots and also uh, recruiting seasonal rangers. Over and above that, and rangers, um, to people that can, that can patrol these areas and be um, the, the sort of boots on the ground. Over and above that, um, we also, uh, as I've already mentioned, increased the Rural Tourism Infrastructure Fund. So there was a number of bids from Sky and Lochalsh for that funding, um, and that funding has been um, now, I think, um, released to invest in things like toilets um, and other things. Over and above that, uh, Highland Council have also recruited their own uh, own rangers, or are recruiting their own rangers, um, and have also drafted their own visitor management uh, plan to try and manage um, the, the issues around uh, congestion. Unfortunately, you cannot legislate for respect to other people, and you cannot legislate um, necessarily for respect uh, for the natural environment. If you take littering as one example, and it seems that the uh, the sides of the main roads um, are just pretty horrendous at the moment, and um, whilst there are fines uh, that can be levied against it littering, if you don't see people, then it's very difficult to do that. Uh, so there are a lot more boots on the ground. I spoke last year to some of the, well, at least one of the rangers in the National Park area. I know it's a completely different area from Sky and Lachalsh, but one of the rangers, and um, they have the, the powers to and ask people, or tell people, to put out wildfires and such like. And the ranger in question just kept talking about how uh, threatened um, he had felt at times in that role. So I think there's a lot of work that can be done. The police and Highland Council do already have uh, the powers against antisocial behaviour. And one of the first questions I had with the new um, uh, chief superintendent, is what I want to call him for the Highlands, was around this issue around wild camping and antisocial behaviour, which he accepted he was on. Um, and most recently, I had a response from uh, from Police Scotland about what they are going to do to prepare. And they listed a number of actions. So certainly in the last uh, few months, over the winter period, a lot of preparation has gone in in terms of infrastructure, uh, rangers, ensuring that the police and other uh, organisations are ready. Visit Scotland have run a, a, a substantial uh, campaign uh, to encourage people to be respectful. Uh, hopefully that will all come together and make a difference this year. But um, the difficulty is that you cannot legislate for common decency and common respect. Okay, um, I better hurry up because uh, what uh, what would you support efforts to uh, decentralise Highland Council and evolve um, greater uh, power? Uh, yes, is the short answer. Absolutely, um, I think that, uh, and I said this in the Sky and Hustings, that uh, I think local councillors in Sky and Lachalsh um, should have uh, more power, should have a bigger say, should be able to make uh, real decisions with um, funding, with money and should also have um, more power uh, to, 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 to make decisions. Uh, ultimately, they, like me, are accountable to the people who put them there. Uh, they are accountable, and whilst um, uh, care enormously about their local communities, a local